Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at how you can use calorimetry to calculate how many calories or you know just generic energy units there is inside of a substance. So let's talk about calorimetry. So this is a simplified diagram of a calorimeter and then this is like a fancy one that dietitians would use. It's called a bomb calorimeter. So what is a calorimeter? A calorimeter is a device that measures the heat of a reaction. It's you know Calorie is really right here in the name, and then meter is something that measures something. So it is a calorie measurer, and calorie gets its name from the Latin word for heat. So it is the exact same device, like I said, the dietitians use to figure out how many calories are in the food that you eat. So uh, in other words, you know, if you've ever looked at the back of a nutrition label and you've seen, you know, oh, this has this many calories, and you've wondered, how do they know how many calories something has? This is kind of what they do. They grind up the sample, they pump in oxygen, and then they burn it until there's nothing left but ashes. And then what that's going to do, because of the law of conservation of energy, is let us know how many calories were in our, our system. So like it says, the principle behind a calorimeter is the law of conservation of energy. So here's the deal, right? Let's say I have, you know, I don't know, a hamburger, and I want to know how many calories are in this hamburger. It's really, really hard to measure the energy in a system. Okay, especially if that system is as complicated as, you know, all of the little bonds and stuff that are in muscle tissue that make up a burger and fat, right? So instead, it's easier to take that energy that you are looking at in the system and transfer that to the surroundings. So for example, in this example uh, picture here, you have a little sample. So let's say that's our ground up hamburger, okay? So if you burn this, okay, this is our system, let's say, the surroundings is, is pretty much everything else. And so this container contains water with a thermometer. And so that energy theoretically is going to be going from this as it burns to this water. And it's going to raise the thermometer up a little bit. And as that, you know, I almost said mercury, my goodness, we don't use mercury anymore. Alcohol, sorry, in the thermometer starts to go up. That lets you know that there is heat going from here to here, and it lets you know how much is kind of going from here to here. And so instead of looking at the system, you can actually look at the surroundings. Now, is it perfect? No. Of course, some is going to be absorbed by, you know, the container here. Some of it might be, you know, ex absorbed by air or other weird things, but it gives you a really good approximation. So you can actually make a very simple calorimeter using just a beaker or a styrofoam container, and it's pretty simple to actually do a little calculation and figure out how many calories something has. So again, the energy that heats up the water is what we're measuring. And the equation we use is called Q equals M cat. So that's Q equals M times capital C times, and yeah, that's a triangle, that's a delta symbol. And so it's delta T. Q, that's heat. That can be measured in joules or calories. M, that's the mass. That has to be in grams. C is a constant. It's the specific heat or the heat capacity, if that's what it says. Um, these are the units, calories over grams degrees Celsius or joules over grams degrees Celsius. And then delta T is the temperature change. Now, um, <clears throat> notice it says temperature change. Okay, not just temperature, but temperature change. And also it is measured in degrees Celsius, not in Fahrenheit or anything else. So why is this important that it says temperature change? That means that there are two numbers. You have a starting value and you have a final value. Okay, The change in temperature is the final value minus the starting value because that's the way change works. So what about that constant, right? Pretty much everything else we've looked at. So what about that constant, that specific heat or heat capacity? So that is the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram by one degree Celsius of whatever you're looking at. And like it says, it is a constant. The only one that you really need to be aware of is water. Water's specific heat is 4.18, and that's, again, the units that are associated with that. Or one calorie over grams degrees Celsius. We use calories normally in North America, but joules is used pretty much everywhere else in the world. So joule is used in chemistry, but realize that again, in the United States, we like to use calories because we like to be different. So you'll see a nutrition label here where it says, how many calories? Oh, 38. And by the way, calories with a capital C here, that's kilocalories actually. So it's a thousand calories, like small calories. Um, but that's, you know, negligible right now. Um, here is an international label. So you can see right here it says 350, and notice they say kilocalories. They don't just say calories with a capital C like us. So they're actually a little bit more correct. And then it says kilojoules. 
So it gives you both. So let's do some very simple calculations using this. Right. What temperature change is produced from 50 grams of water absorbing 500 joules of energy? What is this? Well, this is how I like to set this up. So Q equals M times C times delta T. So the first thing I need to look at is, okay, I have my, my knowns here. So I have 500 joules, that's energy, that's heat right here. I have 50 grams right here. It says it's water, so I know the constant's 4.18. And then this is my unknown. I don't know what that is, right? So if you plug this into your calculator, right? If you if you if you need to solve for this, you can divide these out. So divide 500 by you know this multiplicative. Is that a word? No, I don't think that is a word. But whatever. 50 times this, uh, you get a number, and you do 500 divided by those two numbers, and you get about 2.39 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's about right. So if you plug this into your calculator, 500, and then you divide by this um, product, you should get 2.39, okay? How many grams of water can be heated from 20 to 50 degrees Celsius using 340 joules of heat? All right, again, Q equals M cap. So heat, that's 340. Oh, I forgot to put a little decimal here, I guess, but that's 340. Um, <clears throat> the mass, I don't know. That's asking me how many grams, I don't know. It says it's water, so that's good. I can use 4.18. And then what is the temperature? It says it went from 20 to 50. So remember, you have a final value and you have a starting value. That's what temperature change means. It's not just temperature, it's temperature change. So how do I go from 20 to 50 degrees? How many degrees is that? That's 30 degrees. To go from 20 to 50, that is 30, okay? So now again, I have 340 equals, this is my X or my unknown, 4.18 times 30. So if I you know, multiply these together, I can then take 340 and I can divide by these two values and I get about 2.7 grams. So again, if for some reason you didn't get that answer, try it in your calculator, write it out algebraically, that's what you should get. Last but not least, the heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.900 joules per gram degree Celsius. How many joules of heat will be absorbed by a 10 gram block of aluminum if you heat it up by 15 degrees Celsius? All right, so it's asking me for the joules of heat. So Q equals MCAT. The Q is actually what I'm looking for. What is the mass according to this? 10, so 10 grams, and that should be 10.0. Okay, I want to be consistent. What is the heat capacity? This is not water. It is aluminum. So aluminum, they have to give you the heat capacity. Okay, that's different. And then um, temperature right here. It says 15 degrees, so 15 degrees. And again, that should be 15.0 if I'm being consistent. So all I have to do, this is kind of nice, is 10 times 0.9 times 15, and I get about 135 joules. All right, so that was it. That was Q equals MCAT. If you have any questions, let me know.